Does that guy have any knockouts on his record? Get out of that position. Anderson Curtis Silva. Is in trouble. Curtis is in big trouble here. It's over. He's, He's out. out. He's, He's out. out. You were knocked out. Now, I saw your face wrapped around his fist. See, that's, like, that's what you had seen, but that's like the Jedi boxing theory. Mm -hmm. When they swing and they hit my face, that's actually hitting the back of my head. And that's what keeps me on point. Anderson Silva now has a knockout on his dossier. He's just answered Curtis's question in the most emphatic way. Who has he stopped? Sadly, Curtis, he stopped you. You got knocked the fuck out! Hey, what is up, YouTube? This is Bootney Farnsworth, and I hope you guys like that intro. My boy Jamie Foxx back in the In Living Color days. Carl the Tooth Williams, because the tooth will set you free. All right, guys, now looking back, I mean, it's crazy that I even thought that Anderson could knock me out. But at the point, up until that point, he hadn't knocked anybody out yet. But as you see, I was the first victim. Now, I followed Anderson long before he was in the UFC. I mean, he started fighting locally in uh, Brazil. And then he would eventually go to Japan and compete in a shooter organization. Now, I was living in Japan at the time. And you had the UFC, but in Japan, you had Shudo. And at the time, the best welterweight in the world, arguably the best welterweight in the world, was the 167-pound uh, Shudo champion, which was uh, Hayato Maha Sakurai. And Sakurai was a beast. And Anderson just ran through the guy and captured his belt. So Anderson went on. I don't even think he defended the, his Shudo uh, belt. He went on to Pride where he had ups and downs. I think he had like two losses in Prides. And one of his losses was probably the craziest comeback submission win ever he got caught in a crazy leg lock by rio chonin at the time was kind of a journeyman fighter and he eventually moved the cage rage where he captured the the middleweight belt now at the time anderson was still somewhat relatively unknown here in the states well hardcore mma fans knew who anderson was and they knew the talent that he possessed and I was in agreement. I mean, I was a huge Anderson fan. I mean, he was a tactical genius. So when I had the opportunity to fight him, I was, I mean, it was definitely the highlight of my career getting the opportunity to fight, you know, the one that will become the greatest of all time, in my opinion, and in a lot of people's opinion. So going into the fight, my confidence was at an all time high. But this brings me to my second point of this commentary. And that's, um, and it, it kind of applies to, to all aspects of life all aspects of uh, goal setting and all aspects of of having a vision and trying to attain that vision i mean i look at it this way you have yourself and and me being a mixed martial artist but you also have the people around you and at the time i had a real good coach and my training was so so i mean i couldn't find quality training partners so and i'm not making an excuse because this is pretty this is pretty much the story of my whole career and my my personal life at the time which I, i'll let you guys know a little you know at the time when i was doing this fighting thing and uh, um at the time the woman that that i was with was was not the most supportive if, to put it lightly but you know, I'm in a, di a whole different place now. I got a, a great woman and I'm pretty happy now. But it's just amazing how no matter what you decide to do, no matter what goal you try to achieve, it is of the utmost importance to have good people around you in your personal life, in your professional life. And I've said this before in a, another commentary. If there's anyone in your life that you feel is holding you back, you need to cut them loose. And I don't care how much you think you can change them. It'll never happen. Hey, Gray, you got to be equally yoked, right? <laughs> and that's just not in the spiritual sense, man. Okay, guys, let's switch gears again. Back to the fight. Day of the fight. Well, let's go the day before the fight. Weigh-ins went cool. I weighed in 185. He weighed in 184, I think. And we take our pictures and we do our little face-off, which is funny because typically when Anderson does a face-off, I mean, he's kind of mean mugging and his opponents, but... I mean, we were laughing. I even kissed his belt. So it, it was cool. And I noticed in the hotel the, the day before the fight, you know, that he was looking at my highlight videos and and fighters know. I knew that he had to be real careful with standing up with me and, and saying that Anderson has to be careful standing up with anybody is, you know, a compliment in itself. And he implemented his game plan. 
I mean, after the bell rang, he threw a strike and then he attempted to take me down, which which he did. And um, I had what you call a puncher's chance. So he knew he was better on the ground, so that's where he took the fight. Well, after the loss, I didn't take it too bad. I mean, it's a part of the game. You win some and you lose some. So I just have to dust myself off and get right back on the horse. I mean, that's what life is about, right? Well, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. And uh, one of my subscribers asked me if I would do a Q&A. So I thought that would be pretty cool to do a Q&A. So if I get enough questions to do a commentary, uh, a Q&A commentary, I'll, you know, I'm cool with that. So guys, if you have any questions, uh, just leave them in a the comment section. I mean, it can be about anything, you know, fighting, diet, anything. Why I do YouTube, you know, my military service, anything. And that's pretty much it. Oh, my next fight related commentary would be why I left the sport that I love so much. This is Bootney Farnsworth, the only pugilistic COD commentator in the business.